the best bear of my lifetime, Brian Erlacher and Pat Manley. Hi, Pat. Oh, 100%. Brian, good to see you, man. You too. Uh, this is awesome. We could have done 20 minutes of highlights, man. We just do that. You don't have to talk, Brian. Those are ones I like. I like. Oh, I didn't get to see him there. I don't like it when I can't watch him. <laughs> oh, I, can't I, watch I get uncomfortable highlights. when people talk and I can't see him. Yeah. Well, I mean, Pat's here. But, yes. Pat, but, Pat, I mean, how long would your montage be, uh, honestly, mm. if we just did yours? Uh, I'm surprised Tanny got as much as he did in, in the one for me when uh, the opening when I normally come on. Well, hold on, that's, mate. that's hard work. You that's don't how want to good hear he your snapper's name. As long, as <laughs> no. we, if we never heard Patrick's name, that's a good thing because that means he's doing his job. Well, what about that tackle he made? He made a big tackle in Green Bay, right? Sure. I, maybe once or twice, but you still don't hear my name. <laughs> I, was probably tackling I don't with hear somebody Patrick's else. Name. I want the gunners to make the tackle. It was probably with Mike Brown or somebody else. Give yeah. them the credit. It wasn't me. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So how much are you guys hanging out? You you and Pat, oh, you guys seen each other? We went fishing. Was that June or July, Pat? I think. I don't remember. Yeah, it, one it of those was, dates. I don't know. Time, nice. time flies now. Now, but now that, that he's fun. down in Florida and we have our place down there as well, it's nice that we're uh, closer now than we have been the last, what, 10 years? Because I'm in Arizona. He yeah. was here. So, yeah. we're, you know, we reconnected down in Florida. But it was nice. It was myself, Patrick, and Joe Odom. And then Todd Johnson came and ate lunch <laughs> with us after our, our fishing because Todd gets sick on the boat. So Todd came over <laughs> after uh, we got through fishing and uh, we, uh, we had a good time. All right. That, that's amazing. Because if there's bear fans of a certain age out there, they're thinking, oh, but Odom and Todd Johnson. Yeah. It's weird. Like, what other, what other teammates could have been on that trip? That you guys are in touch with. I think you... Des lives in Florida as well. I know he's a fisherman. Uh, Desmond Clark. I don't know who else lives down there. Um, I don't but know. Brian, sure, Brian, sure here's more. the thing, man. Our team. I think everybody still stays in contact somehow, whether yes. through social media, social media text, yeah. a call, like all the time. And it's I hadn't seen Todd in a while. I hadn't seen Joe in a while. And we picked it up like we're in the locker room in two seconds. Brian got me on yeah. a D's nuts joke. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. But you're right about how quick you, you pick up where you left off, and you haven't seen a guy in what 10, 15 years, and you just you pick up right, right where you left off. Uh, that was a fun day, though. We, we caught a lot of fish, obviously, but it was nice to just kind of hang out and, and relax on the boat and have a few drinks and and go back to the, the locker room days. Man, Danny, I, I, I love you. You said best bear of your lifetime. Appreciate that. You must be really young. Yeah, or, I mean, or we've been, or we've been really bad in your both, life. <laughs> both, both, man. <laughs> both, <laughs> both, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I was born in '86, so, so you, you know, missed it. Yeah, you know, in terms of the Bears that I remember, anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Obviously, there were some guys from the '85 team that, when I'm one, two years old. But in terms of, yeah. I mean, Hester is the most exciting bear of my lifetime with the ball in his hands, no doubt. Until Fields came. And then they're at least comparable in terms of ball in their hands. And then, oh, you're looking at me like you disagree. <laughs> no, no, and, and, I, I, I was just. Yeah, and, and it, but then you, man, no, no question about it. Best bear of like, anyone, I would say, under my, my age and younger, 36 and under. Well, and even for people for, for my age, I'm, I'm, I'm 53. It's like, I don't remember Butkus. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I, I certainly Singletary remember Singletary a little bit, right? I, for sure, yeah. but but Singletary also was a product of. I mean, I'd say Dan Hampton's the best were, player on that team, or Steve McMichael. You know, and Mongo was good. Mongo so underrated to me. People don't give him enough credit. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you talk to the guys on that team. Yeah, Mongo was the dude who set the tempo on that team. Well, and he Only Hampton obviously was a mean. But but both he and Hamp were playing inside and yes. outside and yeah. moving around well, and had dominating. Dan, Otis. Wilbur, right. Mike, obviously. I mean, they, they, they were loaded up. That defense was unbelievable. Well, and the, thing, and the thing is, Brian, like, we still, with this team now, they say goodbye to Roquan Smith, Ugh. and they spend big money on Tremaine Edmonds. Which, and, who I like as well. Well, I like both those guys. You know, I. So Tremaine and Roquan are in different positions, right? Roquan was a Will in Coach Eberthus' defense, and Tremaine's the middle linebacker, correct? Yes. So. It's, it's hard to compare because Roquan's going to get a bunch of tackles playing Will in that defense, and Tremaine's going to be the guy kind of like I was in Coach Marinelli's defense and Lovey's defense where you kind of run through the middle. You're, you're the kind of director of traffic. You make the plays you can make, and, and you know, hopefully you can, you can fall into a couple more. But I, I was a big fan of Tremaine when he was in uh, Buffalo. I'm, I'm a big fan. Of, I, I was happy when they signed him, especially for as mad as I was when they traded Roquan. I was that happy when they, when they signed Tremaine because I thought the Roquan deal was terrible. I just don't understand how you draft a guy in the first round, produces – Plays great, and you just don't pay him. I know he wanted a lot of money. He earned that money, and he got it from Baltimore. Though. And he, he's killing it. He's a great player. He's a great player. And then they gave Tremaine here. a lot of money. Yeah, they gave Tremaine, what, $3 million a year less, two or $3 million a year less than they would have gave Roquan. You obviously get the pick that you trade Roquan for, right? So you could, yeah. you could argue that you get yeah. Edmonds and Jervon if, Dexter instead of Roquan. If the picks pan out. You know, that's right. what people get so excited of. Oh, we got these picks. Who'd you get for those picks and what they do? That's, that's the thing you have to look at. You know, it doesn't matter if you get the picks and they don't pan out. Because, you know, Roquan, to me, is a once, maybe once every 20, 30-year type of player. The dude's probably the best linebacker in his position in the NFL right now. Wow. So, so help us out. Like, so Edmonds is trying, in, in theory, to play your position, like you said. 
how difficult is it to make plays if they have no defensive line, which they don't have? Yeah, it's. I haven't seen him play much this year, but it, it's a tough spot. You know, it's he's a special guy, no doubt about that. But when you're put in a position where there's not a lot of great, like I was so fortunate in my whole career, I had great players in front of me, great players behind me, and on the outside as well. I was very fortunate to be surrounded by a bunch of good players, and I'm not sure he's as fortunate right now as I, as I was. I'll say that. Um, but he's he'll he'll get it figured out. You know, he'll make plays. Um, there's only one way to go. To go for this team, right? That's up from from where they're at. I would think, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's been a tough start, but um, I think they'll get. I like Coach Eberflus. I think he does he does a good job with this team. They just gotta they gotta find a way to win games. When you get leads, hang on to them. All right, we get we gotta ask you guys about about Coach Eberflus, and we're with Brian Erlacher and Pat Manley. Now, Brian, you left before Mark Tressman got there. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pat, you had Tressman for a year, and then you're sitting, with, and then you're sitting with me on the radio talking about Tressman yep. um, for yeah. a year. Oh, man. So I, I guess the question is to you, but you guys talk about it because I'm, you know, when you see a coach be as overwhelmed and overmatched in the media room, where Matt Eberflus has been overmatched and overwhelmed these past few days. Does that have an effect on the players in the locker room? Do you hear about it? Do you notice it? And does it have an effect? You can start with you, Pat, because I don't know if Brian even lived that with anybody. Yeah, I mean, I will say this. I said this the other day on the score that um, remember when Sam Hunt, uh, Herod got busted? Yeah. Like, we never listened to Lovey Smith's press conference. I never listened to those during the week. I always listened to the Monday mornings and the Wednesday mornings, whatever message he was giving to us. But if there was big news going on in Hallis Hall, I would tune into those just to kind of get the vibe of what Coach Smith is saying, uh, you know, how we're putting it out there, how we need to follow him and say it. And to hear his explanation of Chase Claypool and all the stuff that's been going on, it just didn't seem like he had control. And, you know, we got, you know, I worked with you with uh, Tressman, and that's kind of the way it seemed when I was there, even in 13. It just didn't have the same control of a team meeting room that Lovey Smith had. He didn't have that power, that respect. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just, I know what the uncomfortableness is when guys say that, uh, guys that have come from other teams, right. That have these leaders they played for these coaches they believe in. Maybe I'm just saying, maybe Eberflus is not that guy. And just those press conferences I've seen lately, it just seems odd. It just doesn't seem like he has control. He might be different in team meetings on Monday and Wednesday morning, but right now it just seems a little odd. Yeah, well, I'm not like past that. I, we never had to deal with that when I played. It was so easy following Coach Smith, Coach Jerron, our D coordinators. It, it was very simple to – because we always knew where we stood. You know, you know, in the media they were going to have your back no matter what. We were always on the same page, I feel like. Um, if there was an issue, Lovey would come talk to you. Your coach would come talk to you. Um, and I'm not sure that's, this is a Coach Iberfus problem as an organizational problem. Hmm. You know, you can always look – it's easy to look at the head coach, but it may go a little higher up than that. I'm not sure. Um, and I don't – I mean, they've had – this will be the – Coach Iberflus is their fifth coach in 12 years now. Is that correct? So, I mean, they fired Lovey in 2012, right? And yeah, then, so and, it's and a, he's the tra- fifth. Tressman, Fox, Nagy. Nagy, two, year, two playoffs in four years, fired. Yeah. Um, and then you get – And then Iberflus. And then Iberflus. So, yeah, it may not be a head coach issue. I'm not sure. You know, I, I think it may go a little higher up than that. But, you know – when you're losing, it's easy to point the finger, and it's easy to nitpick and, and find things that, that are going wrong. You know, everyone – when you're winning, everything's fun. But when you're going through the hard times, it's, it's the, that's when the media wants to jump on you. You guys know how it is. You guys have been in the media for a while. You know how, you know how it works. Um, no, we would never wants, do such I'm not going to point the finger at Coach Eberflus. I don't know him well enough, and, but I'm sure he's a stand-up guy. And from things I've heard about him around the league, he, he can get the job done. But, Brian, what would – because it's 14 consecutive losses going mm-hmm. back to last year. Yeah. What would that have done to you? As a player, I don't know, man. I, I, but shoot, we lost eight in a row in 2002 down in down in uh, Champaign. Not that's not the reason oh, we lost. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't play good. We started out two and zero and lost eight in a row. But oh, what a miserable it, year! Yeah, that was. it was for us. It's frustrating, you know. <laughs> as a player, you want to win every game. You you feel you, you you know you have a chance to win every game. You have a feeling you should. You prepare like that, and then you don't. The results aren't there. But 14 in a row, I didn't realize it was that many. Damn, it's been yeah, like man. 345 that's, that's days. That's not good. Dude. Um, Give it, yeah. they've, they've given up. I wish I could give you a better answer, but I can't. I mean, <laughs> that's, uh, that's frustrating. But, I mean, I'll just throw some stats at you. So, 14 Damn. losses in a row. They've given up at least 25 points per game in all 14 of the losses. This year in four games, they have one sack, mm. and they have two takeaways, and they were both against a backup quarterback when they were down by 30 or more. That's when, what the when the other teams were down by thirty. When the Bears that's when, were down that's by when the Bears get all their stats though. When they're when they're down by thirty, that's when you get <laughs> the yards and the touchdowns. You know, the, our stars are still playing, and you got the Chiefs. You know, 
practice squad guys and our, our stars. So we got to get those yards though and those uh, <laughs> stats. You know, you got you to get those adding up for some reason. Do you look, I mean, man? It's tough. I don't know. It, it's tough times right now. Brian, Brian, I got the easy answer. They got to start playing locker room dodgeball. They got to have more fun, right? They got to quit screwing around. Quit, yes. quit, quit being so serious in meetings all the time. Yeah. Start having fun. Play <laughs> right. some ping pong. You know, or maybe quit spoiling them so much. Because I've seen House Hall since we left is much oh different than when we were there. So yeah, maybe quit spoiling these guys so much and make it harder for them. I don't know. What did you think when Pat Manley would show up at your defensive meetings? Great. You know, uh, Pat, Pat had a good handle on the team. I mean, I think he would go into the o- – o- we were talking about this earlier. The O-line meetings until Tice kicked him out. Yeah. Uh, he'd come and sit in some of our de- – and I think – I don't know if it was more for his knowledge or just to see what the coaches were saying because I think we had some interesting coaches, Pat. You know, Coach Marinelli gets some great speeches. Uh, that, that Babbage, was the one, obviously, yeah. If Babbage got going, you knew it was going to be a, a oh, yeah. few choice words said there. So it, it was just fun. And it's same way with Coach Rivera. You know, always, they always, he always made the sure. good comparisons. But just to the coaches we had, I think, kind of drew Pat in there more than our uh, scheme and what we were doing that week. I don't think that mattered well, to well, you. Now, it, it, hold on. We, we had great coaches like John Hoke. I spent an entire uh, uh, man, yep. weekend of an OTA going to D, DB meetings just because I wanted to be around him. I respect that guy. I love that guy. I wanted to expand my you know knowledge on football. But then Charles is in there. You had some fun people. Uh, so it was just fun to be around all those guys. And to have the opportunity to be able to do that, that's what I loved. I felt like I got a – front row seat on game day and was able to run around Hallis Hall and just snap on Sundays. <laughs> well, you're a curious dude, Pat, and that's why you can talk all three phases of football th- that's right. these days. Smart guy. Yeah, smart smart and curious. No. So, John Hoke, why haven't they made John Hoke defensive coordinator? They're living in a world with no defensive coordinator. This seems insane to me. Everybody has good things yeah. to say about Hoke. Why is he not that guy? I don't know. Maybe he's too good of a position coach. They don't want to lose him as a position coach. So they don't want to put him. You know, some guys, so I'll say this, Coach Babbage was my linebacker coach for I think eight of my last nine years, and the one year they put him in D coordinator, we weren't as good. Coach Babbage is like, I need, I'm a linebacker coach. Put me a linebacker coach. I can I can get my hands on these guys and just work with them. And then we had, uh, I think, who called the, de- the the defense that year? I think it might have been Lovey or yeah, think, Lovey stepped I think up. Lovey Marinelli did. I think Lovey did. And I'm not sure, um, but yeah. you know, it's just. And then I'll say this: the year that that uh, Bob was not our linebacker coach, I, I didn't play as well that year either. So you kind of it's you kind of give and take. You know, I know that's on me as well, but you know. It does have a lot to do with your coaches, how well you play. I firmly believe that. So, yeah. what it, what would you say? Like again, you're not there. You don't know Eberflus that well. But like, yeah. so he, Alan Williams, leaves uh, mid season, mid week, yeah. and now you've got a head coach calling the defensive plays. How would you imagine that's impacting the team? I mean, I, the head coach is in my meetings. I'm going to pay. I know I'm, nothing's going to go swept under the rug. I'm going to pay more attention because I know when Lovey came into our linebacker meetings, it was like, oh, man, Lovey's in there. Pay attention. Okay. And we were before, but you're, you're even more so when the, when the headband's in there. Yeah. It's more, I don't know, more serious, I guess, because you, you're kind of nervous to, to screw up or when your, your position coach asks you a question, you want to make sure you know the right answer so your head man thinks you're ready to play. But, yeah, I would think with him in the meetings and him running things, it would be a little bit more serious and maybe, I mean, they played better last week, right? They, till the end of the game, they got well. Yeah. They scored. the The Broncos had those nice takeaways there at the end of the game, but uh, I feel like the defense didn't play a, as bad last week as they See, maybe did the week he's before. He's watching. He's watching. Oh, like, well, I have. We finally got the, the <laughs> We got rid of our old thing. Now we got all the games on. Oh, see. Yeah. It's great. a whole new world. And then tomorrow night, you have to get the special channel to watch it. The yeah, Amazon yeah, channel. Yeah, true. You got to get, yeah, the, you Amazon. get the Amazon thing to watch the game. Hey, uh, so it's clear you guys loved Lovey. Yes. And you seem to have realized how many coaches they've had since Lovey w- was fired after a ten and six season. Yeah. Um, it's rare that a defensive coach sticks around for a long, long time. I know. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. about it. We'll talk <laughs> about like, it. He sees the computer. He sees his son who's going. So I'm like, to I got your screen there. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, <laughs> but, but I wonder if Lovey had been allowed to stick around. Like, was he starting to get involved on offense at all? Like, Belichick was a defensive guy yeah. who became an offensive guy, became an all-around head coach, and could think about everything. Could Lovey have evolved and thought about offense enough and been a modern NFL head coach still going if they gave him a chance to still still go? I'll tell you, I don't think you have to be an offensive, defensive guy to be a modern-day head coach. If you have good coordinators yeah. on offense or a good, a, if you're an offensive guy, you have good de- coach. D-line or good D coaches. But they get hired away. That's the problem. I know. That's what happens. That's why you train your guys underneath them so you can promote them, right? You have guys underneath them that, that, that do a good job. You promote them when they leave. That's what most of the good – I think that's what the Patriots do. When someone leaves, they promote somebody because they've all been trained in that tutelage of, of Bill Belichick, whether it's offense or defense. But I, don't, I could never see Lovey as an offensive guy. You know, we had good, good offensive coordinators there, good enough. And we knew what won our games. Our defense is where the money was spent. We were supposed to win games on defense, and that's the way it was going to be. And that's that's just the way it was. Yeah. <clears throat> Brian, I just I, Lovey was a leader of men. Yeah. 
when people ask me about him, he was just a leader of men. I think he could walk into any business, set a standard, get people motivated. You know, he might not know the ins and outs of everything, yeah. but he could be the CEO type where people are going to look up to him and be like, all right, what's our standard? What's our motivation? All that kind of stuff. And people just follow him. He's just a leader of men. That's that's the way I describe him to people. I agree with you. And you know what was great for me is when the media used to get, well, he does, is he not fiery enough for you guys? You know, because in the media, he gives his press conferences, he doesn't give us much. Good. We don't want you to have much. You know, people get mad and they say, the fans are like, well, he's not fiery enough. We don't need to be a fiery head coach in your interviews. In the locker room, in, in our meetings and stuff, we knew exactly what was expected of us every single day. He let us know. And when it was time for him to say something, we knew and we got going. So can you guys text him if Matty Riffles gets fired? <laughs> well, I don't, I, I'm surprised they haven't reached out, honestly. I mean, after, well, Glovey's got to be, what, 62, 63? He's not old by any means. 65. Yeah. I'm 65, you know, he he's not doesn't have a job right now. I mean, why not? I think the Texans, he loves are, coaching. Texans are paying him for a couple more years, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Maybe he's Brian, Brian. the best gig, get the NFL uh, But I, I hope Iberflus works out, honestly. I, I think he, he's a good head coach. I think he's a good football coach. It's just it's hard when you when you have the talent pool they're working with and and the situation going on at certain positions. How hard was it Brian, for did Lovey ever yell at you? Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, hey. Big guy, you know, he would uh, raise his voice there. <laughs> what game was there? It might have been a practice one day. I did something I probably shouldn't have done. And, he, you know, there's no curse words. Crap, darn, dang. Jiminy Christmas. Yeah, and, and you're like, <laughs> I was like, oh, damn, I did something really bad. He said crap. <laughs> so you, you kind of know when, when – and there was a, a game where I didn't make a play or something. Or I, I think I got a, a penalty in a preseason, and I said, I'll do that. I'll hit him every time. And he, Lovey screamed at me. I was like, oh, I was like, hey, coach, don't talk back to him. But, uh, yeah, I got flagged for a hit that, that was not – Allegedly legal back then. <laughs> so, so you excited for your son Kennedy Erlacher? Yeah, commits to Notre Dame, and he he's he's got to live in the in the shadow of his famous dad. But is he strong enough to it's handle his, it? How's he, it going to be? He's making his own shadow, man. I, I'm a I'm an afterthought. I'm, I'm an old fart. He's doing his own thing. I went to New Mexico. He's going to Notre Dame. There's a small difference there. Uh, he's done very well in the classroom. That's why he got the chance to, to attend that university. Because you don't go there just based on football. There's a there's a whole thing you have to ch- a checklist you have to get off to get a, to to be on to get in Notre Dame. So he's done a great job. Marcus Freeman's their head coach. Love Marcus. We played with Marcus for one year in Chicago. I think we drafted him 07, mm. yeah, 07 or 08 maybe. Um, and then it didn't work out. But man, I'm just happy for the him to get a chance to go there. And you know, football's great. I, I'm a big fan of football and in Notre Dame. But that piece of paper he's going to leave with when he leaves Notre Dame is, is going to be a big deal uh, for him in his future. What are you like as a football dad? I just sit in the, in the crowd and watch, man. I'm, 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 he and I have conversations after games, but during the game, I'm rooting for him and his teammates. I, uh, I do get into the games quite a bit. I don't see. I gotta, I gotta take a step back sometimes because I don't know the coverage. So you know, I'm like, the, I don't know the coverage. Wow, you're I don't like know us watching the game. Yeah, I'm like, we all right, don't know what all right. I'll see a play. I'm like, what the, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, all right, relax, dude. You don't know the coverage, so sit back. Maybe you'll, you'll talk to him, and then we get home. He's like, I said, hey, what happened? So he shows me the film. He's like, well, I'm responsible for this. I'm like, all right, we're good. That's all I was wondering. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm the media right now. I, I don't know exactly what you're doing, but I'm judging you based on what I think you should be doing, and I'm wrong. So we have good conversations. You know, he asked me the, the right questions. Um, but, yeah, it's fun. My kids are awesome. My, my, I have a 22-year-old daughter who's a first-year law student at Marquette. Wow. And my 19-year-old daughter is a freshman at KU, and then Kennedy will be attending Notre Dame. Uh, he'll go in January as an early enrollee, so it's exciting. So you're, you're in the Midwest still all the time. Yeah, I know I'm about to be back here a whole bunch more. They're all yeah. – it was fun. The, the, the Notre Dame-Ohio State game, we all three met up there, which was cool. We That's flew great. up from Arizona. Pamela drove from Marquette, and Riley flew in from KU, and we drove down. It, it was really cool to have them all there. So we'll be – you know, hopefully we'll be linking up quite a bit of his games in the future. And and you're here with Circa, man. We love Circa Yeah, Circa's Vegas. awesome. Yeah, they really are. Derek Stevens the, is a good hang. Everyone who meets Derek loves him. Yeah. They're like, oh, he's just a normal guy. If you go to this casino in Vegas, you will see him in the casino. Oh, yes. If you go to Circa, you will see Derek hanging out We've been many the, times. among the – people um that obviously that sport book sports book is phenomenal uh, yeah. if, if they do anything like that here compared to what vegas is this place is gonna be badass they're going to it danny doesn't leave Derek's side when we go to vegas i just why I, would you it, it's incredible i mean i've never known someone who owns a casino and i spent a full <laughs> at we when bears yeah. were in vegas like speaks was like i want to go see Allegiant stadium and go to bears raiders i'm like Meh. I'm going to hang out with Derek. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stay in the sports book. And we watched nine hours of football together. And it was like I was in the movie Casino. Yeah. It, like he, handshaking everybody. Everybody $100 comes up to him. Yeah, everybody comes, comes up, up to him. him. Always a drink whenever you need one. They, it was they, incredible. They, it's, uh, it's cool. It's different being with him. I've been to a lot of casinos, believe it or not, in my day. Yeah, and you yeah. don't get the experience <laughs> that you're going to get hanging out with Derek that you do at other casinos. I mean, and he treats everyone nice. You know, he's nice. He says hi to everybody. He's like a, you know, he's the, when he walks in there, he's like, the guy, everyone. Midwest you know, hospitality. For sure. Oh, he's What's from your Detroit. Game? He's from Detroit. Yeah. You know, he is. So yeah. 
Uh, Blackjack. Blackjack. And I am not good. <laughs> do you play by the book or do you get emotional? Well, who wrote the book? Let me ask you that. <laughs> I mean, someone who knows the math. The damn casino wrote the book. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you're feeling it. Sometimes yeah. you're feeling it. I try and do other things by the rules. Um, but it's oh, funny. We, we went to the Bahamas last year for my uh, Riley and Kennedy were 18 so they can gamble in the Bahamas. So we're like, yeah. we're going to go to the Bahamas. So we went. Riley was playing blackjack and I was watching her. And she, versus, she had 15 versus uh, a face card or a seven. Seven or lower, she would stay. I'm like, Riley, it's, you got you to hit that. She's like, I'm going to stay. She had to win 80% of the time. So I'm kind of changing my mindset now when I get 15. 16 yeah, yeah, I hit every yeah. time. But she's um, she's changed my mind, thinking a little bit on, on maybe when to hit and when not to hit. This is why you have kids. That's right. To teach me. Yes. Yeah. To teach yeah. you better gamble. gambling. But yeah. she ended up winning 1500 bucks in that little setting. So she did a good job. There you go. Yeah, she was, she was down to her last 100. And she uh, she was actually at a table that was too high for her minimum bet. But she didn't know that. But she kept she kept winning. So it doesn't matter. When you win, it's easy. Yep, it is easy. She only got nine blackjacks and thirty hands. So, <laughs> yeah, she'll, she'll learn. Look, it's going to be like that forever for her, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Luck. Uh, win all the time. Last guy we have to ask you about. You know, your other one of your other high profile teammates is on the station all the time. Olin Krutz. Oh, gee, love him. I mean, I'm sh- who doesn't? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't get a chance to listen to to the radio station very much, but I know if Olin's speaking, it's going to be the truth. It's going to be what he sees, and it's probably going to be right. I don't know what he's been saying about this year, but I how about his son's playing down at U of I, right? Amazing. Yeah, yeah. His son starts at he's center. so proud. And he's coaching he too. Be. He's coaching high school. Oh, Is he? Where's yeah. he coaching? I didn't know that. Yeah, he helps at uh, Carmel? Yeah, at oh, Carmel. J-Mac. Carmel. Carmel. He's with he's with J Mac. That's yeah. what J Mac is. Oh man, how good is that team gonna be? Yeah. <laughs> Dang. All right, so so we so we he got says a he only here. wants to run power on third and twenty though. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. You can't, get, you can't get in trouble running power row. You know, you run it three times in a row. If you punt, you punt. If you don't, you just gotta make some plays, man. So what we need is an Illinois Notre Dame matchup in the next couple years so Olin's kids can try to block Kennedy. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know if he'll be, I don't know if my son will be on the field by then. Well, just, <laughs> <laughs> Notre Dame is good right now, and he's going to have to work his butt off to get on the field. But, you know, I know Olin's son, I said Josh just starts at center, yep. and James is, is a yeah. safety or linebacker, correct? But, uh, yeah, yeah. But those, I remember seeing those kids around the facility when they were younger. It's amazing. And, and you and Olin, do you guys have kind of a partnership in terms of, like, who was going to be controlling that locker room? It was Olin's locker room. There was no partnership. I'm happy to be in the locker room. Pat, I'll tell you, I was happy to be a part of that team when we had a great leader like Olin Krutz in our locker room because – Everyone knew who, who set the tone for our team. You know, we had you hear these two, two different leadership styles. Agreed, yeah. But you hear you hear stories now yeah. about teams like, well, our locker room is this, and we knew what our locker room was, Pat. We knew who set it, who set yeah. the trend, um, and you know, Lovey knew what type of guys to sign. I think, and, and who were going to fit in, and, and it seemed like we never had any issues in the locker room. We always had. There may have been issues outside the locker room, but when we were at work, it was always always good. That's awesome. Well, and fun. Yeah. More importantly. Hmm. Well, well, you can watch the game locally on 32 if you don't have that Amazon thing. For oh, yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be back in Arizona, so I'll have to find it somewhere. All right, you'll find it on Amazon. Or track it on my phone. But this was fun, man. Thanks for, yeah, uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for hanging Brian. out. Good and catching up. Hopefully the Bears find a coach and they start winning some well, games. I, well, you don't think Flus is a guy? Nah. Why, well, okay, no. do we have to go now? Why no, no. Is we, why we, is we, everyone blaming out. Coach Eberflus? It's not a matter of – I'm tired of people blaming the damn coaches all the time. You've been through four coaches in 11 years. When is it going to be somebody else's fault? Oh, I mean, I'm I don't not understand. Saying it, I'm well, tired of new, people blaming they, this dude all the time. It, it, it is, well, it is other people's fault. Well, they have but a new now, president now. They, they have a new president now, so we're excited to see what Kevin well, Warren's What's the record do? been since they, since they hired him? Well, he, this is only his first they, year. They're, okay. they're winless. But, but okay. he I'm did, just kidding. He, <laughs> it's not his fault. He doesn't make the roster. He didn't pick Ryan Poles, and he didn't pick Matt Eberflus. Who drafted um, Justin Fields? Was uh, that Poles' first draft class? No, that was Pace. Was it Pace? So we got that thing where nothing's timed out, where not everybody is all together on the same page. So there's a thought process. I mean, it's like when Tressman and Emery got fired at the same time. Remember that, Pat? It's like well, they should have never hired Emery yeah. in the first place. They should have never fired Jerry Angelo, number one. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. Emery comes in and wants to fire Lovey. And then you see next year Emery gets his ass fired because yeah. Wrong. Yeah, that was bad. he's not a football guy. He doesn't know anything about football. The thing so. with Eberflus is they're playing sloppy. They're not fighting that hard, and he's a disaster publicly. So we assume he's got to be at least a disaster privately. So he's going to be the scapegoat for our organization. Well, so what do you think it is? So let's fire him. Well. You've had four coaches in 11 years. Yes, sir. What's got to change? Is it the players? I'm sure it's partly the players. I mean, is it the organization? What is it? Well, I mean, so I mean, listen, I can't make You keep changing head coaches, team. you keep getting the same result, except for Matt Nagy, who went to the playoffs two out of four years, and then you fired him because he didn't meet your expectations. What are your expectations? I'd like them to have a quarterback once in my lifetime. Well, so you draft Mitch. You, you trade up to get Mitch in the, yep. with the number two pick. Yep. And then you cut him, and then you trade up to get Justin Fields, who is basically – Mitch Trubisky, they're the same same type of player. It's also not working. Yeah, 
it's not working as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you could have saved a couple picks and, and and kept Mitch and maybe paid him a little bit. Um, but right. now you're back to square one. So look, Brian, if the real answer is that the Bears are a dysfunctional family business, okay? That's if, what you said it, not me. I said it. Yeah, you said it. Not I me. said it. Your eyes said it. Uh, but so <laughs> <laughs> one but, of you guys said it. Not so me. so if that's the real answer that they're a dysfunctional family business, so was Detroit with the Fords. And you know what they did? They brought in Chris Spielman. And, oh, yeah. and and Spielman said, "Oh yeah, I like Spielman. I, I'm a football human. Let's let's get some other football people in here." And he picked Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell's a stud, right? And and, and he picked um, he picked the G, the GM Aaron Glenn, also the D coordinator, played in the NFL for there a long go. time. There you know, go. They got it, football guys in the building. I think it's Brad Holmes is 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 the GM there. Yeah. And so so they've got a thing yeah. in part because they brought in a former player and knew what the hell he was doing to help advise this dysfunctional family. Yeah. And that's what the Bears are overdue to do, in my opinion. Yeah, you might be right. I don't know. I can't, I don't know the answer to that question, man. It's hard. You're you know, asking when, it though. When you're losing, it's hard. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's hard <laughs> when you're losing to pinpoint why you're losing. You know, you, yeah. you, everybody wants to change, it, including the players, the coaches, the media doesn't want it fixed because it, they don't have anything to talk about then. But it's, Brian, it's, I it makes your job you too. It makes your we job too it hard when things are going good. No, do you know no, how jealous no. I am of people that were able to cover that Super Bowl trip. I oh, want to oh, go the trip. See, you want you're not talking about the season. You're talking about the trip. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So you want to go to the game. See, you don't want to do all stuff going into it. You want, you want to go to the game. We, we would have kept Lance off South Beach. We would have done it. <laughs> was he on South Beach? I just heard a little. Who something. cares? He played good. Who gives a hell, man? Who, who, that guy could do anything you want to during the week, but he's going to show up yes, on Sunday and make plays. So who gives a hell okay. what Lance did during any week? All right, so that wasn't the problem. I guess. No. All right, so yeah. Brian, now that you're okay. here, uh, <laughs> there's, there's a thing in score uh, history. It's score legend. Do you, are you familiar when you guys played the Texans? Oh, and I'm so glad and, we're going to play this for him. Uh, Manning, Daniel Manning was on the other team, and your ex-teammate, and you helped him up off the ground. I think he had like been down, and you reached down, and you picked him up or something it's a like that. Why would we be on the field at the same time? I don't remember. He played defense, I played defense. Correct. We shouldn't be out. It must have been a special team. Yeah, I think was special it 2012? Team. What year was that? It probably had be, was. Had to be 12, my last year. I think it was 12, yeah. Yeah, all right. I so don't you, remember so this, hey, Maybe he made a play and somebody you, made a pick. You, you embrace him, walking something off the field. Happens. Our overnight host, Les Grobstein, rest his soul, he's since passed away. Uh-huh. He was very oh, angry no. at this act of sportsmanship. We want to play this oh, for you. I'd love to hear it. I right. love hearing these guys. All right, here's, experts. Here, here's Les Grobstein <laughs> on Brian Urlacher and Manning having a good interaction on the field. Do not congratulate the opponent. I don't care if it's a Fex teammate during a game. No, That's no. bull. Do it after the game. I totally agree with that. Before the game, you want to say hi, whatever. During the game, you're congratulating a guy for picking off your quarterback's pass? Complete play, garbage. Sorry. What the hell's gotten into athletes in this day and age? They just realize that it's not life and death. You're trying to beat this team's brains in and trying to beat them. You don't congratulate them for doing it. They're taking money out of your pocket. They're no. trying to do something that could no, end up not. keeping you either out of the playoffs or get you a lower seat or cost you the division title. Are we done yet? Is this guy done talking? I, yeah. I disagree. Okay. No, no, no. I think it's okay that you Then you're full of crap, too. You're all full of crap. <laughs> you don't do that during a game and congratulate the other team for making a play that's hurting you. That pisses me off. I don't care. How did it hurt the game? It, How did it hurt the Bears? It would have hurt if the Bears is a guy intercepted a pass. He helped his team and he hurt your team. But I'm saying, what did the shake, the shaking of the hands, what did that do? You're trying to beat this team. You're trying to beat this team. Congratulate them after the game. When the game's over and they huddle up, all guys get in the center of the field and do that. That's cool. That's a really cool thing. They go out there, they pray um, together, they do this. That's I, I wonderful. Get I get what it's Are we done? Do you want me to res- respond to this? Yeah, we yes, like please. You, I could like really give a shit what this guy says. I don't know who he is. <laughs> but I'm, just because I help somebody up doesn't mean I want to win the game or I don't want to beat them the next play. I could tackle somebody 15 straight times and help them up 15 straight times. On the 16th time, guess what? I'm going to hit him again. And this is like I did the 15th time. It doesn't matter who you help up, who you don't help up, who you congratulate. Uh, that shit is so dumb to me. I can't stand these guys that go on the radio beating their chest about what guys shouldn't do or shouldn't do. I know you said this guy's passed, you know, whatever. God rest his soul. But you, know, you, you can like or not like something about a guy's game, but I, yeah. I was not that guy. I mean, Daniel probably made a good play, you know. He made a good he, pick. He was my friend. I don't care what point of the game it was before the game, during the game, after the game. Good play, Daniel. I don't care. I'm going to try and – if he gets the ball when I'm on the field, I'll try and tackle him. Yeah, you'd still, right, you'd still be his butt. It's not going to change you. the way I approach the game because I helped somebody up or told them good play. That is so dumb to me when people say that. You're full of crap, too. You're all full of crap. <laughs> <laughs>
Brian, who's 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 you all? All, all the media? Everybody. Media? Yeah, everybody. It, 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 anybody yeah. on the radio station who disagrees. Oh, what time was this guy on? Like at midnight? Yeah, yeah, midnight. So he had, lot, he had a lot of listeners, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a good slot to put that guy in. <laughs> if the Bears called you to help fix some things, would you take the call? Well, I always feel their call. I always talk. I'm, I, I'm not the guy to fix anything, first of all. Okay, fair <laughs> but, enough. But I'm always w- willing to talk to George or whoever. But I, I actually had some conversations with Coach Ibrahim. I like him. He, he's got a good. His defense is awesome. But the same thing we ran when I was there. So it's a good defense. All right. Well, Brian, it's been awesome to see you. Thank, you. thank you for being so generous Appreciate with your time. It. Cool to hang out at Circa, and yep. uh, maybe we'll have you on again. All right. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's Brian Thanks, Erlacher. Brian. Thank you, Pat, for hanging out good longer than you, you normally Pat. do. Good to see you as always, Pat. See you on the boat or the golf course, Brian. Yeah, he'll see you on the boat and the golf course. All right. It's Parkinson Spiegel at Circa <laughs> on the score.